This is Green Machine Radio on AM 1170, The Answer. This show features all types of green industry products. Now, here's your host, Dave Stahl. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yes, we're here at Green Machine Radio. I'm Dave Stahl. We got Mark Maynard in the house, editor of the Union Tribune Wheels section. Right on. How you doing, brother? I'm awesome, thank you. We got some cool stuff coming up this hour. We do, we do. We, you know, we, we probably might want to go right to it because this, we have a special guest in the house, and it's Kate Cole. Hello. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Grateful to be here. And you are the uh, educational manager for aquaponics, and uh, this is a group in Escondido, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, that's correct. I work for a local nonprofit called EcoLife Conservation. Okay, and you brought an intern with you, Jesse. How are you doing, Jesse? Good. How are you doing? All right, and how long have you been an intern? Um, I've been interning for about five months now. Oh, wow. How long does the intern last? Uh, till the end of... May. Then what? Uh, you have to beg right. and hope they'll, let you, they'll keep you? Yeah, I'll pray. No. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, Kate, now, you, now you're in your 20s. Yep. You know, and I, I guess the first question I want to ask is what got you interested in being in, in this type of a field? Is this something you personally went looking for, or did you fall into this? So I started gardening, actually, because of my grandfather. He taught me everything I know about gardening at the age, I would say, of 21. Mm -hmm. And I applied at EcoLife Conservation with just a hope that I would be get to come the educational manager. I started off as the admin and just started learning everything about aquaponics. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in conservation and sustainability. So I kind of just fell in through it through this admin position and took notes, went to all kinds of workshops and really just brushed up on my skills and found a passion for sustainable agriculture. Foot in the door is what we call that yeah. in the industry. So tell us what is this company? So EcoLife is a nonprofit organization dedicated to a world which people and nature prosper together. Mm-hmm. So we focus on environmental sustainability and community health through simple adaptive approaches such as aquaponics. Okay. Mark, you had a question? Uh, no, we were just getting into the aquaponics. Yeah, uh, I'm curious about it, too. Because yeah. when I think aquaponics, I think that's growing without water. Well, it's actually just the opposite. Growing You're growing without. in water. So, uh. yeah, so aquaponics is the science of raising fish and plants in a recirculating environment where fish waste acts as a natural fertilizer for the plants, and the plants in turn clean the water for the fish. Does it make a difference what the fish eats to determine yeah. what it gives as a fertilizer yeah so you definitely want to choose an organic fish food or a natural fish food so your plants can be really healthy and uh, what's pretty cool is that the water actually just will cycle between the grow bed and the fish tank so it continuously is cycling so there's no runoff into our waterways and Mm -hmm. it actually uses 90 percent less water and land compared to traditional farming Mm, interesting so less uses less water than dirt exactly 90 percent less Hmm. It's easier to handle, too. Way easier to handle. Once you get your system set up, you don't have to think about watering. You don't have to think about weeding. It's a really great way to grow food. Plus, you don't use any chemicals or any pesticides because you want to make sure your fish are nice and healthy. Well, what uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm uh, trying to get visual, my head around Visualize, this. you know, what are we seeing when you talk about an aquaponics farm or, I guess, a... a bed a garden bed Mm -hmm. Uh, what does this look like and I I suppose you can do this you know consumers you can do this in your backyard exactly yeah anybody can set this up in their backyard you can get your supplies from any general hardware store so it's pretty neat and easy to set up and establish so I can go into the basic system types there's three basic systems that you can use to grow your food in aquaponics okay Cool. So you got the first system, and that's your ebb and flow system. So that's when your water is flowing in with a siphon and flowing out every couple hours or so. So you have a clay media that your plants are going to be sitting in. And this is really great for plants that have an established large root system, like tomatoes or cucumbers or something like that. You can also use worms in your clay media just to help it even more uh, create more fertilizer for your plants. So that's one system. That's your ebb and flow. And then you have your NFT system. That's your nutrient film technique. So that's when you have about two inches of water that has a constant nutrient-rich flow for your plants. 
That's great for growing things like leafy greens or basil, things that don't have a large root system. And you can just take an old gutter or something that you have in your house to set this up. And then you have your deep water culture. And that's for your commercial size or your raft. Uh, type of grow. And this is really great also for growing leafy greens. And that's just if you can imagine kind of like a styrofoam mat that's going to be sitting on top of water. So your roots are always going to be submerged in water. Hmm. Wow. So what's the dimensions of a, you know, a, a backyard aquaponics garden, I guess? How big? What is this? How much space do you need? Yeah. So what's really awesome about aquaponics is you can have it in any space that you want. As long as you have some great sunshine so your plants can grow, you can modify it to just about anything. Okay, so let me see if I have this right. So I've got this five foot by five foot pond, Mm -hmm. and I have fish swimming around in it. Yep. And do I have to have a pump to keep the water active so that they so it doesn't become stagnant? Yeah. So you need some put of uh, energy, which is going to be your fish food and electricity. Okay. So there. So we got my little fishies floating around. Do I pick any particular fish? Halibut, shark, whale. <laughs> I mean, freshwater, dolphin, <laughs> tilapia. <laughs> <laughs> tilapia. I'm starting to get hungry. No. Is there any particular type of fish better than others? Mosquito fish. Yeah, that's a great question. So depending on where you live, uh, here in San Diego, a really easy option option would be catfish or goldfish because they don't mind cold water or warm water. So that would be a super sustainable fish. And they poop a and lot. And they poop a lot. So that's a really great fish to get your system Okay, up so I got, my, I got my gang over here doing their thing, swimming around. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now I have a, a thing over here where I'm going to say grow tomatoes. Yep. Let's just say. Do I go to the grow? Do I go to Home Depot buy a tomato plant already established? Do I do? I think you were mentioning that you just planted seeds the other day. But let's just say we're not going to do the seed thing. Let's just say, do I go to buy a tomato plant, shake the dirt all out of it, yeah. sit it in the water? It's what do you? Does it go through styrofoam and then into water? So that's going to kind of be up to the consumer. If you do want to have an already established plant, you're definitely going to want to make sure you rinse off all that soil so it doesn't clog up your system. Right, right, right. Or what I really like to do in aquaponics is that I start almost all of my seeds and then I'll transplant them into my traditional garden because you don't have to think about watering them every day or keeping them alive. We all know how difficult it can be to start your seeds. If you miss one day, what happens? So your seeds germinate in the water exactly yeah so it's not so it's not like they're completely submerged in the water you have a clay media so your clay media is what holds your roots and um your seeds so you could take a paper towel or you could take a coconut husk and it's going to be damp and then uh your roots mass will start growing down into the water i gotcha yeah all right and then of course the fruit and everything is grows on the top so you can pick it yep exactly okay Let's take a quick break. When we come back, because this is really, I, you know, I, I, when Paul Drevis told me that this was going to be a great interview, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'm interested in aquaponics. I don't know anything about it, but it's turned out to be way more. And there's more to oh, it. Oh, you're going to have to start doing this, aren't you? I can see Dave's interested. Well, He's, you know, I already I, got him started gardening. You know why? I know why. Because <laughs> you miss a day, you 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 forget. Or you look to the wife and say, didn't you water the tomato plants? Well, no, I thought you watered the tomato plants. Now they're shriveling. Let's take a small break. This is Green Machine Radio right here on KCBQ AM 1170. We are the answer. to Green Machine Radio Show right here on KCBQ. Dave Stahl in the house along with my good bud Mark Maynard. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. And he's the editor of the Union Tribune Wheel section. All right. Hey, we've been chatting with uh, Kat Cole and uh, Jesse Grajada. They're from Aquaponics. It's a nonprofit organization up in Escondido. Uh, Kat is the manager of the educational program, and she's been kind of turned that into one of her goals. Did I get that all right or did I mess it up? Kate, it's, oh, it's all good. What did I say, Cat? Yeah. I like Cat. Meow. But I change people's names all the time. I had a camera guy at KUSI. I called him Larry for, I called him Larry Three for years. a year and a half. And everybody at the station started calling him Larry. And he actually pulled me over and he said, will you stop it? My name is Kevin. You don't look like a Kevin. You look like a Larry. All right, Kate. I should have just wrote K-A-T-E, huh? 
I know, whatever. But anyway, she's here. And I got to tell you, folks, you should be sitting here. This this girl is so bubbly and so excited about what she does. And, you know, it's rare that you find people in business that are enthusiastic as about it as well, she Well, is. Dave and I are, are gardeners. I have a garden now. Yeah. I, you know, I just picked some broccoli yesterday, and I've got chard growing and Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Are and you thinking about flour. aquaponics, possibly? No, um, because it's because I live in Hamul, and it's nice. It's great this time of year for such a garden. But you like playing but in the But you're dirt. going, you know, in the summer, like last summer, it was wicked hot Well, for that's why aquaponics would be perfect, so then you can keep growing those, plants all year round. Yeah, but that poor fish. But you, you know, got to just have them in a nice, you know, partly shade. shaded area. Yeah. You have your fish reservoir in the shaded area so right. you don't get any algae bloom. And then you got your plants in the sunny area. And put screens right. over the top so the raccoons right. don't exactly. come and go fishing. Another immediate uh, consideration is the high mineral content. In my, it almost come, my water almost comes out in chunks. Dude. I live in Alpha. Yeah. Right? yeah. I know exactly you know, what like, you're saying. I mean, like 500 parts per million of uh, concrete. But I think what what she's saying is you don't have a constant flow of water coming in you just use a certain amount of water even if you were to go down and buy spring water distilled water or whatever well, what's great anywhere in san diego you can use tap water so what you would do you'd fill up your tank reservoir let's say you have a 150 gallon tank you're going to keep that tank cycling over and over and over again so you're never going to have to add any more water other than maybe a tiny bit that's going to yeah, be lost to transpiration or evaporation right right so with your tap water really easy solution you just add a little bit of vitamin c and that's going to break your bonds of chlorine and chloramine okay. and your uh your ph is going to gradually come down over time with vitamin c yep just a little bit of vitamin c that's it just go to you know your local grocery store right. get some powdered vitamin c and just add that into your tank and you'll be ready to go you don't have to get any of those fancy fish dechlorinators or anything like that yeah well kate had described two different well three different systems but you know for for consumers and, and backyard operations Two. that was the ebb and flow system which uses these it's a it's like little balls of clay stuff yeah um and the clay pebbles plants are now how long would that be could you do like a five foot by five foot you'd place that on the ground you'd have your frame you know something you know a tarp or something that's going to be watertight or a plastic fruit. container mm -hmm. plastic yeah. container yeah well you know like when you go to the, when you go the kind you could you know i mean it depends how big you want but i mean yeah the first thing i'm thinking of you know how you get those plastic containers and put your sweaters and everything in and slide them under your bed yeah mm -hmm. you know they're like three foot by four foot they got the lid on it so you can keep your yeah you just want to make sure <laughs> that it's going to be a little bit deeper you want to make sure you got some depth in there yeah because if you're talking 150 gallons of water yeah, and you're just going to want to make... Well, it depends on what you're growing, well, let me right? Ask you this. You, Do they make tubs and trays? Exactly, yep. They have a Somebody's lot. Somebody's making money off of this? They are. Yes, they are. Yep, there's a lot of great resources like the aquaponics source where you can just go online and there's tons of grow beds. Right. Mm -hmm. All kinds, every size, yep. round, square. Yep. Anything to fit your lifestyle, probably. Exactly. It's just like I said, you can basically design your system to whatever you need. Okay, so you buy your fish... You buy your tanks. You decide which program you want to go. It's probably either one or two, not three necessarily. I mean, you can do I, most of the time. People use the uh, deep water culture for commercial size. Like we have a ranch up off Deer Springs Road, and it's completely run on solar. And we have a deep water culture system for commercial growing. Uh, however, people can also do that in their backyard if they want to as well. You would just need to get some sort of styrofoam to be floating on top of the raft. Right, water. I got it. And then the styrofoam is where the plant goes through, and the roots go out the bottom, and the plant stays up there floating. Yep. Yeah, because I could just see my lettuce going upside down. <laughs> I don't know why. I'd be so bummed. And you know I'd screw it up. I could help you out. All right, so I'm going to need all the help I can get. But no, I think... You would need an attendant. Yes, I would have needed an attendant. But no, I, I, no I'd, I'd phone you. Um, no, seriously, and, and I, I see this in, in underprivileged countries. Yep. To grow their own foods. I mean, how much is a bag of seeds, really? I mean, right yeah, in? about $1.52 yeah. yeah. for organic seeds. We always want to promote, you know, organic yeah, growing, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. with the fish, and it's just healthier for all yeah, of us as humans. It's hard taking a fish to the doctors. <laughs> yeah. They just don't get expensive, stay, too. They just don't stay on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> just, we're out. Well, yeah, okay, so now is there a limitation of what you can grow? 
So you can grow just about anything in aquaponics. The things that are going to grow best are going to be your leafy greens or okay. plants that are high in nitrate. So carrots and potatoes probably wouldn't be such a good idea. I would probably <laughs> prefer to grow those in the ground. I mean, that's a, you can you can grow carrots. Definitely, people do. Yeah. Um, I would. For me, I, I do root plants typically in the ground, and I do leafy greens in aquaponics because gotcha. you don't have to add any sort of fertilizers. Your plants. What's uh, the crop look like? Beautiful, and the plants Real grow fast. so much faster in aquaponics compared to traditional gardening. A so you lot can st- quicker. So you can stagger your 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 produce because there's nothing worse than growing a bunch of lettuce. Now I got 500 pounds of lettuce. Well, that's true. You you, know, you buy the six pack of lettuce. You know that's that started, and then you those. plant it. It all comes right. I at the same hate time. that. Can I? I just want to take one out. Put it in my pot. My wife would. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's a plant thief. <laughs> she'll go over to your house and she'll if she also you hear snip snip. Snip, snip, <laughs> snip, snip. And then she'll come home with a sack of. That's why everyone all around her house is glasses with snippings with all the roots starting. And then she runs outside and she puts them in the dirt. Yeah, yeah, genius. Kate has some really fun stories because you work with uh, universities and schools to yeah. teach young people. So tell us this. how that program is put together. Yeah, so I have uh, two different programs. I have one where uh, teachers can apply for an indoor aquaponics system. So you can also do aquaponics inside with the grow light. So people that have apartments or for classrooms, it's perfect setting. Uh, easy. Students are able to use the aquaponics system along with the K-12 through STEM curriculum in order to learn about Concepts such as aquaponics, green energy, conservation, um, science concepts like the nitrogen cycle. And then I have another program, which is just my joy. And it's where I go into schools and students are actually designing, engineering, budgeting, and building an outdoor aquaponics system to serve as their community garden for their school. Hmm. How cool is that? Yeah, so Patrick Henry uh, actually was my last school, and they had to stop their garden because of water restrictions here in San Diego. Mm-hmm. So now they get to have a garden once again to serve as their living lab and to grow food but aquaponics. with aquaponics. So they actually gained permission to kick the old uh, garden back up again. Exactly. So it's it's just been a really great, great experience. The kids zeriscaped the outside of the garden area. Yeah. It's alive again. It was just abandoned, and now it's beautiful, and they're growing their own food. How young? How, what's the age of the kids in these programs? So it's K through 12. Uh, that was a high school at Patrick Henry. I have a middle school coming up, Fulton K-8, where they're going to be growing food for their lunches. And then Montgomery Middle is coming up, and then Claremont High, who's going to be doing theirs on solar, we're hoping. So, uh, so how, how, really did, how does that get funded through the schools i mean do you as a nonprofit help raise money to help these kids yeah so what we do is we get donations from private donors who are always so grateful for mm-hmm. and then we also apply for grants and mm-hmm. with that grant funding we're able to utilize it for you. our program so we are a not-for-profit so all of that money if you want to donate to school aquaponics will go directly to help fund these programs right. at these schools right and that'll just allow more schools to get involved uh, you know, like you said, from K through 12, and then eventually, you know, if you could get every school kid, you know, involved in this, just think where we would be from an agricultural point of view yeah. down the road. I mean, we won't need acres and acres and acres and acres of dirt. Exactly. And with our population on the rise and our current drought situation, we really need to think about sustainable food production and how we're going to be feeding our population. Yeah. Oh, without it, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and somehow control waste. Exactly. Because if the I think if you look at the waste factor of how much food Americans, and I use America because we're the worst, mm-hmm. waste on a daily basis. I mean, Mark and I, we go on events all the time, and, and I, I you could just imagine the amount of waste because they try to cook you the weirdest food in the world, and half of us won't eat it anyway. But And then it ends up getting thrown out. No, yeah. don't Come on, don't even start. Some of that stuff is really strange. <laughs> but the bottom line is I think smart growing, smart consumption, healthier consumption Mm -hmm. okay we're gonna take a break but when i want to come back because you know again i always follow the money follow the money follow Mm -hmm. the money follow the money so i'm seeing all these big agricultural giants you know heinz you know hunts wesson and all that you know they're still using thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of land Mm -hmm. to, to grow their product could you turn those guys and would they are they even looking at what you're doing so we Tell you have, what, hold hold yeah. that. Yeah, let me hang on to that because this is the way I'll give you something to think about. Because, again, you know, it's like if I came up with a car that runs on solar 
And you think the Chevy, Ford, and Chrysler are going to love that? No, not unless they got their little fingers in it. Food's the same way because it's something you have to have, and that's food. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we come back more right here on Dream Machine Radio. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Johnny, be good. <laughs> Right, folks. Hey, welcome back, Green Machine Radio. I'm Dave Stahl, Mark Maynard in the house. How you doing there, Hot Rod? Terrific. You learning Dave. anything about? Well, I am. You know, You're because we are gardeners. We like that, and we like to learn new things. And I'm still trying to. But we like shovels. Them. All right, we have just been having an absolute blast. We've been sitting here chatting with uh, Kate Cole and uh, Jesse. Did I get that right? Jesse G. Yeah. You can call me Jesse G. I'm just going to call you Jesse G. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. You could be a rapper. Uh, Kate is a uh, educational manager for aquaponics, and she's been chatting with us about it. And, and I, I brought in Jesse as a, uh, one of the top-notch interns there. Oh, thank you. Working hard. Yeah. Always. Uh, staying away from dirt. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, you know, I fall right back into that old question. You know, if it's sometimes if it's too good, you know, who's going to make all the money on it? And because, I mean, when you're talking just a small container of water and a bunch of little fish, I don't see a whole lot of somebody making a lot of money except us getting a lot of quality food. So how do you how do you address that? Or are you being embraced by the industries? Yeah, so I will tell you guys, uh, Ecolife Conservation, we have tried to go talk to our big commercial scale farmers, but the average age of our farmers they're in their 60s so we're not listening to you you little whippersnapper <laughs> so what my main focus is educating our next generation of farmers our and the future next farmers, farmers. Right. so that's where all almost all of my energy is putting into having these students understand the concept of aquaponics understand the concept of uh, sustainability conservation green energy so we're actually working with organizations such as strategic energy innovations who's coming up with an entrepreneur uh workshop that they're going to be working with us and these students at let's say claremont high are going to be able to understand how to make this economically available and ready for students within their generation Mm -hmm. so we have tried talking to our farmers but it is going to take a lot for them to convert over so that's why we're really putting our effort into our future farmers because you also got the guys making all that chemicals and all that stuff for the farm and i guess what really rock comes to mind is i i do i i mc a, a a race in mexico so i fly to all the different locations well there are acres and acres and acres and acres of farmland in mexico mm-hmm. you know and i could just see where this would be such a bonus to mexico you know especially in the rural areas do, do you guys go out of the u.s do you or does your program continue out into Uh, Yeah, so at Ecolife Conservation, we also have another program, which is a fuel-efficient stove. So inhalation of chronic smoke from open cook fires is the number one killer of people in the entire world, believe it or not. So we go into places uh, like Michoacan, Mexico, where the monarchs have their uh, butterfly reserve, and also in Windy, Uganda, where the mountain gorilla lives. And these stoves uh, reduce respiratory issues because there's a chimney that funnels out the smoke and is well as burn 60% less wood. So we don't really have aquaponics going on in other countries right. so far. But you do have but other we things. we do have other programs such as the fuel efficient stove program. Wow. So your hand has lots of fingers. Yeah. And, exactly. and that's what you need. I mean, you can't just pinch and hole yourself into one. Yep. But let's go back to aquaponics again, just, just for a second. Do you ever have to change the water out? I mean, does it, you know, I'm thinking of my jacuzzi. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so the plant roots are actually cleaning up uh, the fish fertilizer, the fish waste or poop. Mm -hmm. Um, And also you're going to have two different kinds of filters in your aquaponic system. So you're going to have your mechanical filter, and that's where your solid waste is going to get trapped. And you're going to want to clean that out every two weeks. Just rinse it out with hot water. And then you're going to have your bio filter, and that's where your good bacteria lives. And that's where it converts into nitrate for the plant fertilizer. And that you just leave alone. So as long as you're not overfeeding the fish or adding too many fish too quickly you won't have to change the water how many fish. i guess it, it all depends on you know the size of your your growing bed exactly uh, okay so let's and talk water. about mm-hmm. and the water now what about, what's say the cost what's you know okay for a, a an apartment size uh, uh 
what's the, the ebb and flow type thing? Or is that what you use in, would you use in an apartment or would you use the, you know, the water-based NFT system? Yeah. And what would that cost and how many fish? So we actually have a pre-made system and it's $280 and you can grow about 13 plants. It comes with the grow light. It comes with all the materials you need other than the tank, the fish and the food. So your filters are in there, your pump is mm. in there and you can just get that pre-made. So those are for the people that just want a system. They just want to get started. They don't want to have to build anything. It's a plug and play system. That's my kind. Of <laughs> <laughs> I built my chicken coop. I'm telling you, we're still married. Yeah. Her and I both built it, but that's another story. But okay, well, that's it. Okay, that's not very expensive at all. Yeah, and then if you want to do, you know, an outdoor system which you just make on your own, you can get supplies. A lot of the stuff you might even already have, like piping and things like that. You could make that for about two, three hundred dollars. A super simple system. I've seen PVC. Pipe used. Exactly. It, it was the Sam the Cooking Guy show. Yeah, that yeah, had yeah. The, That whole well, a friend of mine array of uh, those great PVC big pipe. beer coolers, those big styrofoam beer coolers. Mm-hmm. And he cut holes in the top up, and then and he put the pots in there with those little balls. Yeah. And then the plants grew down into the water and. Yeah. yeah, there's so many makeshift things you can do. So that's why I feel like aquaponics is for just about anyone because it is cheap and you can use it anywhere. Does it take any particular kind of a plant? I mean, you said you were, I mean, organic seed, so you probably wanted to start with whatever it is, be organic. She's going to use organic, but you and I could use anything we buy at the Yeah. Uh, no, and but you got to do what she says. Or yeah. Like, it won't I mean, come out right. We promote, I, I always promote buying organic and also growing organic just because, mm-hmm. you know, you... I mean, an organic is such a loose term, so I can understand, you know, where there's the line. Um, But when you're growing your own food, why not grow organic? Why not, you know, know what's going into your body? Well, same thing with the chickens. You know, I know exactly what goes into those chickens. You know, we get really good, high-grade organic, you know, scratch and and all the other stuff. And you can see it in the end result. I just never understood why to go organic. They take everything out, and you have to pay more. But that's just me. I mean, you know, you, you got to start taking care of yourself. That's I why. Feel fine. <laughs> I feel fine. I'm doing good. I'm gonna go have a carrot here. You know, yeah. it's yeah. also the impact on the environment that non-organic companies make when they're yeah. spraying yeah. pesticides. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not mm-hmm. just harming us. It's also harming oh, yeah. everybody. Um, you know, agriculture is the number one habitat killer of our species of animals so that's another reason and why that's a big money company my dear mm-hmm. there's some big boys up there and they're they cadillac are. smoking cigars looking down at you saying who's that little whippersnapper down here <laughs> trying to go aquaponic on me no 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 well i expect you know there is a it's not necessarily underground interest or or movement in this but i think you know there's a growing interest cult in cult following, no, it's to a cult following. I think well, I mean, it's, a happy cult. It, it, it's, it's sort of it's, cult. it's more like the uh, the the silent uh, majority of people interested mm. in this and trying to find a way to learn about to do more of it. Yeah. I think the key that, is the once quality. you find out how easy it is to do it, because initially, yeah, you're thinking, oh my god, PVC pipes and a tank and fish and it can feel like a lot of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. And also, we do offer community workshops uh-huh. for people to learn how to build an outdoor aquaponics system. So we'll go through, you know, the types of fish, the types of plants. We'll give you a list of resources. We'll actually let you have a hands-on experience of growing um, and putting together, not growing, but putting together right, right, your right, right. aquaponics system. What, day, what days do you do that? So we do that about twice a once a month or every other month, and you can find that on our website, ecolifeconservation.org, and you can sign up. It's 30 bucks for teachers and students, 40 bucks if you're not, also 30 for military. So if you are interested in learning how to build a system and also seeing a real uh, commercial-sized greenhouse run completely on solar, I invite right. you guys to come check that out. The one you build for 30 bucks, do you take it home with you? Or is that just for the class and all the That's for the class. class. That's for the information. I just thought I'd ask. Yep, yep. Well, you know, seriously, you and I ought to consider taking a class. That would we'll be great. We'll have KCBQ. We'll have, we'll have the station or our show pay for it. And then you and I go up on a Saturday probably because it's mainly Yeah, on it's Saturday. on Saturdays usually about And then you and I can take the class. And then we can bring you back in. Because right now you're just looking at a couple old guys haven't got a clue. But we have gardens. We, we grow, have gardens. We so it's things. so we have. And you guys are learning quick. But I would like to come up. I would like to <laughs> come hope. up and sit down and, and, and go through this, and because then, then then what if we do the next interview, you know now it's 
you know, our eyes have been open. We know exactly what you guys are doing. I mean, not that we don't, we believe in what you're doing. Yeah. We're backing you for yeah. what you're doing. We just don't know how you're doing what you're doing. Exactly. Because we've never done it. Mm-hmm. And, and now I, I know what those little balls are in the, in Alex's box in, in the shed. <laughs> I never knew what those things were for. I, you're set up, you're pretty well set up to just do that oh, type yeah, of program. Oh, yeah, I do Because... You know, you've got somebody else at home too that that would have. I know your wife Michelle would have interest She's in got four this. fish tanks. She'll try to figure out how to get those fish to do the work. You know, but angel fish, I don't think are the fish we're looking for. Well, you can use tropical fish. Are those are they salt water? Salt water. Oh, no, fresh, 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 fresh water. Fresh, fresh. Well, for instance, uh, my mom has an eco cycle. She teaches special ed, and she has one of the small scale indoor systems, and she has all tropical fish. You just need to have a heater. For your tropical fish. Are yeah. Are you See, kidding? My wife, our dogs live in the garage for God. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, now I'm just could trying to figure out how I can run aquariums? pipes to these things. Because those things aren't making us. Aren't doing yeah. That. No, but you could use the aquarium. So if you already have a standard aquarium with yeah. a 12 by 24 inch footprint, yeah. that's what the EcoCycle sits on top of, the indoor growing system. See, oh, see, you just get uh, Michelle going on this. Mm-hmm. The fish won't eat the roots? Nope, because there's a... There's a um, plastic that's oh, okay. going to be on the top. So, yeah. I could just, because I know our fish. Yeah. Our fish eat everything. That is just so, I mean, I mean, I've just, I've always heard about it, but, but again, now, is there a website that you could go to yeah. and are there videos that'll show you how the whole system goes together? Yeah. So we have a bunch of YouTube videos for like the- tutorials. <laughs> we have a bunch of videos on YouTube. If you just search EcoLife Conservation, and that's talking about our indoor growing system. Okay. And then we have uh, resources on our website and that's ecolifeconservation.org. So that's E-C-O-L-I-F-E conservation.org. Okay. And also I'm always a resource. My name is Kate. Uh, you can find my email, kcole at ecolifeconservation.org. And right. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm sure you're on Facebook and Twitter. Definitely on Facebook. Yep, you guys can like us on Facebook. But the Kate is spelled different. If they're looking for you, it's K-A-I-T. Yeah, but my, e- yeah, my email is actually just kcole, so you don't have to get confused oh, okay. on that one. Yeah. I'm already confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look for that. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, it's the future. I mean, I can just see it. And, you know, and I'm both of us, like he says, we both garden. So when you eat something out of the garden versus what comes out of the grocery store, it's ridiculous. I mean, I haven't eaten a tomato except what I, except I end up growing 50,000 tomatoes. Then at you one can time. make sauce. Mm-hmm. Salsa. Yeah, I make salsa. Salsa. Grow some cilantro in your aquaponics system. Yeah, I know. Make a good and, salsa. And you know, cilantro you, would go very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And well, and you, you know, and you, I've got rosemary. I've got a rosemary bush as big as this table. Rosemary is pretty hardy. It just it'll grow in it'll anything. Grow. Yeah, yeah, well, it'll so, but no, I, and I like growing my own food because I do all the cooking. He also cooks. Nice. We could do a cooking show. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, we could do a cooking show. We do enjoy cooking. So, all right. So, what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll take go ahead and take a break now, and then when we come back, uh, we'd like you to just kind of throw some thank yous out to some people. How long has this company been around? So we were established in 2003. Okay, so you know, since 2003, there must have been somebody helping you along the oh, way. Oh, yeah, definitely. So we'll talk about them when we come back right here on KCBQ AM 1170. We are the answer. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Cave 1170. This is got my good buddy Mark Maynard in the house. How's it going? Did you learn anything? Today? We are learning about aquaponic gardening. <laughs> and she's such an attractive teacher, too. You know, I always liked it when I was well, a kid. Enthusiasm, I always liked it. Enthusiasm. You know, okay, oh I'm ready gosh. to spend the game and get the kit and try the thing. But I just. Yeah, I know. I know. You just. <laughs> You brought your bathtub up for some reason. <laughs> well, you could, you could if you've got those old bathtubs, get well, a clawfoot bathtub. I know. Yeah, make a raft system. All right. Well, Kate Cole, uh, she is the education manager at Aquaponics. And then we have Jesse G. He is the intern with the same company. And Kate and I were talking a little bit aquaponics and hydroponics are two different animals altogether. Yeah, so I just want to clarify a little difference between aquaponics and hydroponics. So hydroponics, you're going to need to be growing food also in water, but you're going to have to add some sort of most likely chemical fertilizer or some sort of fertilizer to fertilize your plants. Aquaponics, on the other hand, is going to combine hydroponics, so growing your food in water, with aquaculture. 
with which is using fish waste as a natural fertilizer. So mm -hmm. you're combining both aqua, or raising fish, excuse me. So you're going to combine hydroponics with aquaculture in order to make aquaponics. Perfect. Very good. All right. So let's throw a little shout out to some of the corporations and the companies and the individuals because anybody can donate to your cause. I mean, they don't have to be a big Donald Trump. I mean, they just, you know, $5, $100, $200. Someone whatever. who believes in the sustainability. Exactly. That's the same person who's going to buy, spend $100,000 on a Tesla car. Yeah. They don't have to spend that much, but they're doing that because, because they want to. They have a passion mm -hmm. and emotion about doing that and what they want to return, whether it's a, a Prius hybrid or anything else. Right. It's someone who just believes in this sustainability right. and doing their part. And that's what your job is to reach out to those people. So who are some of the folks that have helped you guys along the way? Yeah, so we've had a lot of beautiful and wonderful donors that have helped support our cause with our fuel efficient stoves and aquaponics. Uh, one of our biggest private donors is Steve Schultz with Schultz Steve, uh, Steel Company. And then we have Disney. We have um, Cox. Disney. Yeah, they actually helped with our uh, fuel efficient oh. stove program. Wow. And then for my uh, aquaponics program, I really would love to give a shout out to Cox Cares. They just helped fund uh, 10 of our eco gardens, so the outdoor systems. And then 20 of the indoor systems and then also Kiwanis Club of San Diego and the Kiwanis Club Foundation uh, helped fund five of our eco gardens and 50 of the indoor eco cycle kits and then we have Liotis, uh, we have uh, Captain Planet and we have Captain Planet. Yeah, Captain Planet has helped fund our EcoCycle program. And, you know, we're just continuously looking for donors and we love to give recognition to our donors. And we are happy to support and show everybody that you guys are looking for a sustainable future, that you care about educating low income schools with hands on learning opportunities to create a better world for all of us. Absolutely. Now, you bring up. Indoor and outdoor? You can do aquaponics indoor? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier in the show, we have an indoor EcoCycle aquaponics kit that you can purchase. A lot of people purchase um, on our website. Also, we're on Amazon. It's about $280, and that's going to sit on a standard 20-gallon aquarium. It comes with a grow bed, your clay media, your pump, your filters, your light um, to grow inside. And then also, if you want to do the outdoor system, we have workshops to let you guys know how to build your own outdoor aquaponics system so the 20 gallon indoor system is no bigger than aquariums like you have right, that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah no it's I, I i yeah I, I get you i think that's an excellent idea you know she brought up captain planet and and we had talked because there's three generations um of us sitting here talking about that and dave was saying how his generation wasn't uh environmentally friendly yeah. and i was saying that well mine in the 70s early 70s we began the eco movement yes i had the backpack with the green eco logo and the stripes and we went back to nature and i got my degree in wildlife management and park management as a whole thing she brought up captain planet and my kid, who is 25, grew up watching Captain Planet and the wind and the water and the fire and all of those benefits. And it was teaching children. And look where he's at through, today. Through the comics. And now he is an ocean economic analyst, you know, in looking for ways to use exactly what eco life conservation is doing. And then here you are, you know, this other, because my kid, I guess, would be the fourth gen. Then right you're a little bit younger than he is so it's that same you know that captain planet you're sowing seeds mm -hmm. with young people ca right. as captain planet did in the 80s right. with that cartoon that illustrated mm -hmm. show talking about espousing you know protecting the environment the strikes the environment and here it is again yeah, it's you know, got you right again huh? but captain well planet and that's good because it's not going away so if somebody was wanting to donate, help out any way, shape, or form, just go to the website? Go to the website, or you can give us a call at 760-740-1346. Our website is ecolife, E-C-O-L-I-F-E, conservation.org. And if you want to check us out, um, feel free to just call me. Uh, my name is Kate. Once again, if you have any questions about aquaponics, and I'd be happy to help you out. Trust me, folks, you'll talk your ear off. But that's a good thing. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about the indoor unit, which would be so easy for, for, for hundreds of dwellers. thousands of people. Yeah. Um, what in, in a 20-gallon tank, what are the types of green things that you would 
most commonly grow. And how much could you get out of, say, a 20-gallon or 25-gallon aquarium? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's a great way to start seeds. So mm-hmm. let's say you want to have... You can start just any seed you want in your aquaponics system and transplant outside. That's a great option. So you can grow numerous, numerous plants. If you want to just keep it indoor, let's say you have an apartment or you don't have an outdoor garden, you can grow up to 13 plants. So the good plants to grow in there would be kale, shard, uh, leafy greens such as romaine lettuce, ruby red lettuce. Uh, you know, you could do your sh- your chives. You That's could do really basil. Cool. Yeah, uh, uh, herbs. Yeah. So it would, oh, you'd always have this little supply, this fresh supply. Wow, so you walk in the, and it'd be like in a back bedroom. It has to be, you have to use grow lights. Can you use grow? It comes with the grow lights. Wow, so you can just go in you when you're making... You put it in your living room. Yeah, it's so it's... fascinating. It's... You've got fish to look at. It's an aquarium. You've got fish in there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you've got growth. Mm-hmm. And you can yeah. come in for dinner, and you can just pull off a few leaves of romaine. Mm-hmm. You don't have to pull the whole plant. Or buy the whole thing, and then watch half of it. Well, the, and chicken, throw the, the chickens the will be mad at me, because then they won't get their lettuce. No, but, but how often do we buy, you know, a, oh, a head no, how of much, lettuce? Well, let's put it this way. How much produce do you throw away? Oh, yeah, I might as well ah. just take it out of the grocery bag and throw it in the trash can, oh, because, yeah. you know, the idea is... Do. Which is why we also support composting. Composting is a very important yeah. thing I to help out. I've never had luck with composting. Never oh, had you know, Solana Compost Center, I just went over there the other day, yeah. and I got myself some worms, and they really help you out. They have fresh, they have um, classes over there that you could take for free, so yeah, composting is a great way. see how excited she is about getting worms. I, it's my profile picture. She has been thrilled <laughs> it's her, it's her first pet. <laughs> that she can't wait to go home to her worms. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know. Well, I use worm castings as first fertilizer in my garden. So you can grow I use your fish own. fertilizer. In. Yeah, grow your own worms. So grow your own worms and that could be your compost right there. Super yeah. simple. Yeah. Uh, you know. No, you got it together. You know. You're a good teacher. I don't know too. why. I, see, I, I refuse to buy a composter. You know, that Oh, that barrel. thing goes, it's a chunk, it's a chunk, it's yeah, a You just need a, a space in your house that's in the sun and just Toss your stuff in there. Yeah, Two thirds brown, I, one I, third green. I know, I did that. And it just... <laughs> it's, it's, you got, it takes a while. It definitely takes yeah. a while. To but once you get used to but Yeah, look, but you... so, so for me, here's one guy doing a compost. Mm-hmm. So after how many weeks do I get a shovel full of usable compost? You got to wait months, yeah. Yeah. not weeks. Yeah, and, yeah. and I need, I need more than worms, a shovel full. Yeah, if, if you, you want to have, have your the worms, worms, you know, that takes. Three months, I was told it takes three months, and you put your compost in there, you can put your coffee grounds in there, your tea, and then you can use those word castings for your garden. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Two in yeah. one. Two birds, one stone. Well, we're coming to the class. Let, have Sounds no fear. Because I think once we come to the class, and I think if people would just do that, well, it's, it, it's double-edged sword. One, you get a little bit of money for the program, mm-hmm. and two, we get educated. So we, yep. we can, we can all- host a group coming in. That would be that amazing. Which you can watch Dave struggle with trying to think uh, about. I can aqu- make anything. Aqua yeah. <laughs> You can't make all of that money. Too. All I didn't of that say it looked good. Go back to the program. <laughs> Pardon? All of that money does go back to yeah. the program. So all the money yeah. that we raise goes back into our school aquaponics program. So you're really making a better future, and you're really helping out a lot of well, students. Why don't you think about uh, you know staging a, uh, a, a hosting a group? Mm-hmm. Pick a Saturday in the future. He loves doing this. You, Dave, <laughs> you, you know, you'll join Dave. You pick four other people. Wait, you put me to, in the middle go of this out. thing? Oh, you're going to be Miss, no, uh, Johnny I'll Appleseed. I'll go with you. It'll, no. be, it'll be both of us. Hey, you little green giant. You're going to get in there. We'll get you're... Paul in there, too. Paul, yeah. Paul can come, too. Does Paul know how to grow anything? I, well, he can He's going to learn. I bet he'll show up. I have all the confidence in the world. Well, can't, I can't thank you enough. Seriously, this has been an enjoyable hour. Uh, Mark was even kind of cute. He goes, "You're gonna give her a whole hour." <laughs> I says, "Well, I don't know anything well, about gotta, aquaponics." Gotta, yeah, you know, you got to make sure. It's I don't know anything about aquaponics. I said, "I'm giving her a whole hour." <laughs> and I appreciate it. I appreciate well, it. Well, because if we don't, you know, if I gave you five minutes or if I gave you fifty, could you have? Ex- no, you would have done a fairly good job, but it would not have worked. It, you know, you need. You know, it needs to be, that's why it needed to be what it is. Yeah. You know, and I have no problem. You know, like I said, I have, neither one of us have any money to speak of. But we have things that we can donate that are just as valuable as money. Because if you were to buy this show, it'd be a little on the pricey side. Definitely. You know, to de- or if you were to go out and hire a radio station like Paul. And you know what he charges. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> to do your own show. To, to can a show. Where this way you don't have to. Because we've hit just about everything that there is to hit on it. No, I mean, if we no. miss anything, we can come well, back. We didn't ask Kate 
about her personal oh, aquaponics. Oh, I thought you were going to get into her personal life. Are you married? Do you have any kids? No, no, no I'm single. No. Do you have a Do you have a system? <laughs> uh, so I, I here we do go. I She's on the spot. System? Oh my gosh. Well, at work we ha- I literally take care of probably four or five different systems, and then I'm continuously building them. I'm about to build one in my backyard, so I'm getting ready for that. Have all the materials going. So a big a big uh, system. So I'm going to do. Probably about four feet by four feet by ten. Four, four feet by, by ten. ten. Yeah, and so because you can grow in a tenth of the space. Is that an ebb and flow same. system or an NFT? I system think I'm gonna. Or? I might even do two. I'm still. I'm still um, designing it. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I might do two systems. I just uh, moved into a new place, so yeah. I prep. I just prepped the garden bed the other day, and then hopefully at the end of this month, I'll have my aquaponics system oh, up and wow, running. Yeah. And what things would you grow in your? garden so i'm going to do leafy greens just because those right. are what grow most sustainably and mm-hmm. easy in the aquaponics system and then in my traditional garden i'm going to do my root veggies there and, you, you know beets and potatoes she's and already getting like hungry that. just talking about it look <laughs> at that all right well thank you very much for both of you jesse next time you're in you're on the deck because we'll uh, we'll definitely get you going as well you know great show again website one more time so we're at ecolifeconservation.org it's e-c-o-l-i-f-e conservation.org all right sounds like a plan well don't go anywhere folks you ought to know it's coming up next mark and i were we've been on another oh, couple we've, road trips and we've got the trivia stump dave question what is this trivia oh, stump because you dave. know everything about i don't know everything we're that's gonna, why i bring people in we're like gonna have <laughs> this and jesse you, kate and jesse this was a lot of fun learning about yeah this. we really thank and, you guys we truly appreciate and we'll having def- this time for us we're definitely going to come up we're going to take the class you know just because it, it's, I think it would Don't just say help. we're definitely going to take the class. Just you know, you're just say thank you for the, educating no, us. Gonna, no, it's an open you don't want to go, but we're going. going. All right. We're going to hit the dusty trail, but don't go anywhere, folks. You ought to know coming up next right here on KCBQ AM 1170. We are the answer. Thank you.